you ever watched a bulldozer out in a field doing its thing? You know, rattling along, plowing up the world, and perhaps making things into a better place? Well, let's think about that from a surface texture perspective, though. The path of the bulldozer is going to look something like this. We're going to have a plowed up section of earth and perhaps some raised up areas on both sides of it where the dirt fell off both sides of the blade. These raised up areas are going to probably be addressed with the next pass of the bulldozer. But the same thing can happen in our surfaces. Let's say we have a nicely polished surface and a bit of debris gets into the interface and gouges through our surface. Well, that debris can also plow up material on both sides of the scratch. And these plowed up regions can cause big problems if we're going to press this against another surface. Those plowed up regions are gonna be stress risers or those plowed up regions could cause a break down in an oil film. They'll penetrate through the oil. But here's the problem. In some cases, we see this in our graph, but they are not real. Yes, that's right. The graph on your roughness gauge can fool you sometimes by showing you peaks that are not real. These peaks over here in the graph may not have existed in the original surface. So, Let's talk about how that can happen and how we might be able to prevent that. So we have a nice plateaued surface here. There are no peaks. We have some valleys maybe for oil retention. And we want to look at this particular surface, this primary profile, in terms of its roughness and its waviness. Now, first off, to prove whether or not we have peaks in reality, we should always start at the primary profile. The primary profile is the true picture of reality. But we need to extract waviness and then maybe explore the roughness deeper. So to extract the waviness, we're going to use a moving average, the Gaussian filter like we talked about in the previous video, to smooth our way through this surface. But as this average slides through, at some point it's going to encounter this valley, and this valley is going to pull the average down. The average in this region is influenced by those low points. Same over here with this valley. It's going to pull the waviness profile down, and roughness is everything above and below waviness. So in this region, the waviness dipped down, and that means in the roughness world, we're going to have a zone that's kind of tall relative to waviness as we encounter this valley. So as we encounter the valley, we have pushed up areas that look just like a problem in the material when in fact, it's due to the filter dipping down. The zone between the waviness and the primary is pretty tall here, and that becomes this tall area over here. Those are fake peaks. When we see a graph like this over here in roughness, we should immediately look at the primary profile. Those peaks are not present in the primary profile. So we need a better way of getting waviness separated from roughness when we're dealing with things like plateaus, and that better way is a better waviness filter. If we had a waviness filter that followed through these general trends of the surface without being influenced by the valleys, we would end up with a roughness profile that looks correct. The roughness profile has roughness and a valley, but no fake peak. And the filter that does this, that gives us the proper roughness profile and the proper waviness profile, is called a robust filter. The robust filter is robust against outliers. The robust filter does the moving average of the Gaussian, so it's going to slide this moving average through the surface, but it's going to give less credit to the points that are farther away. So these points in the deep valleys are true, they exist, and they're not going to go away, but they're not going to impact the sliding average of the filter. So the robust filter is the filter we want to use when we're analyzing surfaces with porosity or brittle surfaces like glass that have scratches in them. But always, always, always look at your profile graphs. If you're seeing peaks in the roughness, immediately we should be looking at the primary profile. In fact, I would encourage encourage you to look at the primary profile first all the time. The primary profile is reality. 
Now for more help with this or to learn more about robust filtering, we are glad to jump in and give you a hand. So reach out to us at digitalmetrology.com.